Welcome back. You're still watching the Daily Debate, and I am honored to be having with me over the program for tonight Engineer Mustafa Nagheri, the Deputy Head of the Exporters Association. Thank you very much for being with us tonight on the Thank Daily you. Debate. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be again with you. Here. Anytime. The pleasure is all mine. We will be heading to the second report of the Daily Debate for tonight, which is focusing on the main topic for today, which is the mega national projects and how they could be achieving through them the sustainable development goals for the future of the country. We'll be having more details in the upcoming reports. Stay tuned. Egypt has implemented projects worth 225 billion Egyptian pounds to support sustainable development and infrastructure, benefiting 38 million people and providing 7.5 million job opportunities. Minister of Local Development Hisham Amna said that these projects are mainly in the fields of road paving, electricity, lighting, improving the environment, security, firefighting, and traffic management. Amna asserted that the ministry's strategy to improve the environment and confront effects of climate change focuses on several fronts, the most important of which are sustainable development, developing solid waste management and supporting youth and community initiatives that address climate change. Amna said that the ministry wants to invest 34 million Egyptian pounds to support infrastructure needed for managing solid waste, improving air quality and preserving the environment. Of that investment, 12 million Egyptian pounds will be allocated for landfills and waste recycling. The ministry is committed to taking into account environmental dimensions in implementing development projects focusing on programs related to reducing carbon emissions, stimulating green growth, supporting environmentally and socially responsible investment, and maximizing the value of green investments. The ministry also seeks to adopt institutional and strategic mechanisms for confronting climate change and curbing its repercussions. He added that the local development fund and Mashruak or your project program earmarked 173.5 million Egyptian pounds for promoting heritage handicrafts that have benefited 23 million people. These programs are meant to promote the transition towards a green economy and provide financing to achieve sustainable development goals by providing loans to finance micro, small and medium enterprises and supporting heritage environmental and handicrafts. Mashuak was launched by the Ministry of Local Developments in light of the political leadership's directives to encourage young people to establish MSMEs to accelerate development and reduce the problem of unemployment. Meanwhile, Minister of Planning Halal Said asserted that the National Initiative for Smart Green Projects aim at encouraging creative thinking and practical implementation of innovative environmental treatment in all Egyptian governorates to deal with the challenges of climate change. The goals of the initiative go in line with the Egyptian efforts for green transition and achieving comprehensive and sustainable development. She urged project owners from all the governorates to present their projects that present local solutions for climate change. Said loaded efforts of the partners from different ministries and bodies including the Foreign Ministry, Local Development Ministry, Ministry, of Environment, Communication Ministry, International Cooperation Ministry, Social Solidarity Ministry, Higher Education Ministry, Youth and Sports Ministry, and the National Council for Women in addition to efforts exerted by experts, specialists, and representatives of civil society. The initiative contributes to boosting the interaction of the governorates with the environmental issues in developing via putting an interactive map at the level of governor rates for the smart angry projects. Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the Daily Debate. And as I said in the beginning, I'm honored to be having with me over the program for tonight, Engineer Mustafa Nagari, the Deputy Head of the Exporters Association. Thank you very much once again for being with us tonight. Uh, we have seen uh, over the past uh, report the importance of having mega national development uh, projects. And uh, we also have witnessed over the past uh, couple of days, President Abdel Fattah Hassisi inaugurating a number of developmental uh, projects, mega projects, in the South Valley, for example, Al Wadi, Al Gadi, different governorates all over the country. Uh, for yesterday, to be specific, how did he see the importance of the inauguration of the projects that took place yesterday? 
Um, as we we always uh, as we know that uh, most of nations have to go to uh, a specific uh, national projects to uh, to try to achieve uh, sustainable uh, development for both the economy and the society yes and we can say that Egypt was uh, delayed a lot in such uh, uh, improvement uh, but uh, in the last 10 years, we have seen um, a lot of mega projects, if we can say, in Egypt. Uh, many people are uh, connected to these mega projects, so they can speak more and more about them. And uh, today, maybe you have uh, the pleasure, I mean, to just mention uh, some of these mega projects, because I think it, uh, it needs a lot of time to talk about them. Yes. But in general, <coughs> Uh, the national mega projects uh, uh, are characterized on a way uh, by their comprehensiveness and uh, their uh, breeds and spread among the country. We know that Egypt uh, for a long time have been living only on about 6% of each area and the mega projects in Egypt was trying to um, focus on four main pillars if we can say. So one of the main pillars was to try to reallocate uh, uh, the living of Egyptian community and try to spread more and more in the country and uh, this have been linked to uh, projects which is leading to uh, increase uh, job opportunities and decrease poverty and uh, uh, try to attract local and uh, foreign investors because <coughs> There was uh, a lot of uh, means uh, to talk about them in that uh, way. So uh, my belief is that uh, mega projects uh, aim to uh, sustainable development for both the society and the economy of each country. Mm -hmm. And Egypt for uh, the last 10 years, as I said, have been uh, having a strategy uh, based on four main pillars. Yes. So uh, the, the, the first pillar was to restructure the distribution of the Egyptians. Hmm. Uh, the second pillar was to create job opportuni uh, opportunities and attract both local and the foreign investors. Yes. Uh, number three, develop infrastructure and improve community standard of living and uh, afford food and all services regarding the health care and uh, education and other services like roads and uh, transportation and all these uh, uh, ways. Uh, just, uh, you know, not to be uh, spreaded in several ways, uh, the, uh, uh, one of the goals was to, to, to try to make economical balance and social justice, if you can say, between governorates, because some of the govern, uh, governorates, like in Upper Egypt, were delayed. Mm. That's why uh, His Excellency President Al-Fatah Sisi was talking mm. about uh, the new valley, and yes. the before we have seen what happened in Matruh, what happened in Aswan, which w is a border uh, uh, governorates in Egypt, and was not taking such uh, concern, if we can say, but uh, I, I was very glad to hear that he is pointing to governorates which people, uh, they, they thought that they didn't have uh, the same equal uh, uh, thinking and equal interest for improving the society and the economy there. Um, just to give an idea about uh, two or three uh, models of what happened for each pillar. Yes. So uh, if we talk about restructuring, Mm -hmm. the society of Egypt, we have seen mm -hmm. that there was mega projects about new cities, which we have been talking about that 40 city, new cities were built starting from 2014 until now. Mm -hmm. Most of them are of the fourth generation cities, if we can say. Yes. Uh, and of course, uh, there was agri mega projects, which is uh, the arm to try to build new communities is to start with uh, uh, agriculture so people will move and after that industry, food industry or other services 
uh, or feeding industries will come, so you are trying to uh, uh, build and create new societies. Uh, of course, the new urban societies have been also improved in uh, parts which was totally in the desert, but according to the mega roads uh, 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 program and uh, projects, of course, we can uh, uh, easily see that there was the main uh, direction for all Egyptians was north to south or south to north. But now we have been, uh, we have seen a lot of roads which is linking east, east to west. Yes. And we will talk about that. Yes. Um, of course, we have seen a lot of access as well, uh, economical access, if we can say that was trying to attract more foreign and local investors in these areas. And of course, the job opportunities have been linked to these mega projects and uh, uh, new industrial zones, if we can say, uh, there was uh, build mega gas and oil projects, green hydrogen projects, and nowadays we are, there, we are talking about the green ammonia projects, yes. which is, of course, attracting a lot of uh, investors and uh, offering a great number of job opportunities. The Golden Triangle, of course, and the other mineral projects, of course, is everywhere we can see. Uh, improving the, the, the standard of the living of Egyptians mm. uh, and the, the infrastructure, uh, infrastructure are, you can see, of course, the Decent Life, Haya Karima project yes. is, is, is one of the mega projects. And uh, as we have mentioned before, that Egypt is having uh, a good chance to implement such uh, decent life for all Africa because most of the Egyptian companies are well trained now about improving uh, the um, water waste uh, uh, programs and the water supply and the gas supply and uh, building hospitals, building schools. We are well trained and that's why uh, last week I was in Italy and they were uh, uh, talking a lot about uh, uh, Matei plan. Matei plan, Matei was a prime minister, uh, uh, former ex uh, uh, prime minister in Italy and he was focusing uh, too much about Africa and mm. to try to link Europe to Africa uh, to benefit from the resources of Africa, especially in the power and in the gas and the, in the sun. And uh, nowadays, Her Excellency Meloni is taking over mm -hmm. this program. And uh, I have met with the assistant of the foreign uh, minister of Italy, and he was uh, focusing on that issue and depending on Egypt as a gate uh, for Africa, for the European Union, and they will come in September with a head uh, a delegation uh, of several uh, uh, Italian companies uh, based mainly about four main uh, um, uh, aspects. One is the agriculture and the other one is the leather and uh, one is for uh, building materials and one for the fertilizers. And so that's why we, we cannot separate Egypt from what is going on because Egypt is having a great chance to increase its capability by assisting Europe in, of course, the, we are all talking about the environmental issues and about the clean energy and climate the change energy. Yes. And unfortunately, Europe, they don't even have space to implement. They mm. don't have a space for solar energy. So that's why they are trying to come to Egypt and try to merge through their mega uh, companies in these uh, aspects. Yes. So uh, there is a lot to talk about educational uh, programs, about health care, about a lot of hospitals, a lot of the schools. Even in uh, um, new Valley, we have seen seven new colleges which was established mm. lately and there is the Japanese school there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that we are feeling that um, mega projects are, are really trying to 
have a sort of uh, uh, compromise for those who have been out of the scenario, if we can mm. say. But now we have been visiting um, Asyut, uh, Luxor, Aswan. It's very impressive. Mm. I mean, Talapsha access is unbelievable. It's something really you can see in some countries in Europe. So we believe that the mega projects in general are trying to increase the, uh, uh, the standard of life for most of Egyptians, are trying to link the governorates together by uh, different uh, access and roads and also different uh, um, types of trains. We have been talking about several types of, of trains. Yes. It's not only one train. Mm. So there is a big improvement in the country in this field. Listen, speaking of uh, trains and one of the four main pillars that you've mentioned, the engineer Mustafa Nagari, is the infrastructure that we have had uh, over the tenure of uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in the past uh, decade. And uh, today we have seen another meeting between President al-Sisi and the Minister of Transportation, Kamil al-Wazir, speaking about the importance of modernizing the harbors. Uh, yeah. of Egypt, yeah. uh, as of course the deputy head of the Exporters Association. What is the importance of having uh, a modern network of harbors all over uh, the country? And of course this could be concluded or included in the infrastructure uh, basis of development for the future. Um, as uh, we know that we are uh, very lucky as a country to be well located uh, and we are having two sides of uh, sea sites, one of the Mediterranean and one of the Red Sea, and Egypt is one of the countries which is having big numbers of harbors and ports. Yes. All over the world. I mean, we are lucky to be uh, there, and it is on, as we say, in the trade leg. We are in the, in the trade leg or mm. trade road which is linking uh, uh, Asia to Europe or uh, Africa, South Africa to Europe, North to West, or North to, uh, to South, so we are well located. And as everyone knows that the ports have to be, as we say in the simple word, attractive port. Yes. Attractive port, it means that the shipping lines are going to target this port because they gave them a better service, they gave them faster service, and at the end, it's time is, is money, as we say. So uh, we have seen that there, is, there was improvement of, of ports in the last four or five years, and uh, not, not even the, the ports wa was modernized or uh, uh, was facilitated for shipping lines or giving good offers for reimbursement cost and other services, but also it was connected by serving fast and speed boats from mm. Egypt to Europe. And that's why uh, I have to, uh, to greet uh, His Excellency Kamil al-Wazir because really he was behind the launching of a fast uh, service, a shipping service uh, a boat which is door-to-door -door service and it, it will go in to start from Damietta to Teriesta in mm. Italy and it's not only serving Italy, no, <coughs> it's serving Europe, Europe continent yes. because it's linked with uh, uh, reefer trailers service so you will uh, load door to door and this will improve the trade not only between Egypt and uh, uh, Europe but it will from Africa to Europe mm. because everybody is always trying to look to the north as we say so most of the European countries are, now, uh, are looking for Egypt and I have met with the, the chairman of the Teriesta port and the, all the logistic companies and they are looking forward to start this service because the trade will be much more and uh, Italy would not act as an end mm -hmm. hub but it will be uh, mm -hmm. as, uh, as a gate. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a corridor as mm -hmm. we say, it's a corridor to Europe so they will benefit from service providing to all the European community which are going also to look to each. So I have to say that of course improving the ports was one of the, uh, of the main uh, improvement which you have seen as exporters. Also the importers are feeling that uh, regulations are much easier now uh, 
uh, we are uh, having electronic documents more and more step and step so it is shrinking the time and at the, at the end shrinking the cost mm. Yes, uh, Engineer Mustafa and Nagari allow me to be going to the other report of uh, the daily debate for tonight which focuses on uh, the investments of uh, the Egyptian government and the, uh, of course, the political leadership of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Hassisi to be investing 225 billion Egyptian pounds in sustainable development goals for the future. We'll be having more details regarding such a huge number and a huge sum in the upcoming reports. Stay tuned. Egypt signed the United Nations Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework Agreement with the United Nations to achieve Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Prime Minister Mustafa Mahmoudi, UN Resident Coordinator in Egypt, Edina Penova, attended the ceremony. The Prime Minister asserted that the signing is a culmination of Egypt's and UN's development relations over the years, highlighting Egypt's role as one of the founders of the organization in 1945. For her part, Panova said that the 26 UN entities based in Egypt have jointly worked on this cooperation framework. The UNPGF was fully aligned with Egypt's Vision 2030 and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Panova stressed that the UN General Assembly Resolution has identified cooperation framework as the most critical instrument for planning and implementing UN development activities at the country level. The framework unpacks the three dimensions of sustainable development, including the social, economic, and environmental dimensions. It includes a dedicated outcome area on the empowerment of women and girls, and a new priority area on transparency, good governance, and the rule of law. Egypt has begun implementing an economic reform program with the support of its development partners, but Moody affirmed citing Egypt's program alignment with the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, as well as the UN-affiliated national strategies. The reform program included several social protection measures targeting groups that are most in need, citing expansion of Egypt's cash transfer program the careful and Karama, which already provides support to millions of families. The government has also increased pensions and wages, adopted tax exemption for low-income citizens, and provided various forms of support for basic goods and services. Furthermore, Prime Minister Medmoni asserted that Egypt is aware of the challenges that still exist, and the government took swift and decisive measures to eliminate economic activity as well as strengthen social protection programs. The Prime Minister also emphasized the importance of the African continent, highlighting that it comprises 71% of the world's least developed countries, which requires more collaborative international efforts and multilateral projects to strengthen its private sector human capital and infrastructure. Welcome back. You're still watching the Daily Debate and I am honored uh, to be having with me over the program for tonight Engineer Mustafa Nagari, the Deputy Head of the Exporters Association. Thank you very much once again for being with us uh, you. tonight. Uh, you've mentioned before the report, before the break, that we have four main pillars for the mega national development projects to be implemented here in the country according to the vision and the strategy of the political leadership. One of them is to be distributing the population of uh, the Egyptians all over the country, not to be just uh, having a certain place to be living uh, upon. On the other hand, um, after building all those new cities all over the country, how do you see the response of the Egyptians, the response of uh, the citizens themselves to be relocating, uh, to be changing where they live, to be uh, changing where they even go to work? Do you think that this has uh, changed over the past decade? Yeah, of course. I think that... Uh from what we have seen, uh, I mean, uh, people are, are happy. I mean, we have seen uh, new many a city and we have been uh, in, uh, in Matruh. I will give only example, as I mentioned, in uh, three governorates which 
was a, we, it's a border uh, governorate. Yes. So if we talk just as a one model of Matruh governorate, uh, everybody knows what is, is happening. We have seen uh, New Alamein City, we have seen uh, Ras al Hikmah development, we have seen a um, lot of improvement in the agriculture. I mean, we have in, uh, in uh, Siwa and in uh, El Daba'a uh, access about and in El Mughra as well. Yes. Uh, we have seen more than 300,000 acres of uh, uh, um, agriculture land w were added to this government uh, only in, in a very mm. uh, few years, yes. just five or six years. What we can imagine, we have seen uh, uh, projects for water desalinations, and we have seen hospitals in Alamein, in Siwa, in Barrani. Huh? We have seen also new schools and the colleges uh, as well. So uh, new airports. So as the end, you can see that the, the Matruh, which was having a big area but was considered as a desert is not anymore a desert and the and the, the level of living certainly will improve with these mega projects so they are having uh, good water maybe everybody remember uh, in 70s and 80s uh, uh, to have uh, uh, fresh water to drink it was a problem in yes. and we used to, to wait for the train coming from alexandria with the water mm. even before having the, the, the pipelines. But at the end, now they are depending on the resources. They are having the desalination uh, uh, stations, two or three desalination stations, which is covering the governorate. Siwa is improving a lot. So at the end, there is mega projects starting from the Medicare, education, uh, uh, building new houses for uh, for the people, not uh, as uh, before. Uh, new roads, uh, Baba Road. You can see all the roads in the northwest mm. coast. Everybody, uh, uh, even they go for tourism, they are realizing that you have roads of eight lanes, and there is the new electrical train, which is serving from Sokhna until Matruh. <laughs> So at the end, you are trying to link the country together. And as we always say that, on each axis or road, to the sides of this road, there will be a lot of activities and there will be new life. So at the end, this is only one model. If you go to Aswan, you will have <coughs> also the same yes. interest. If you go to Wadi Gidid, as His Excellency uh, cleared what happened, it's, it's really something amazing. There is a, a big opportunities for everyone who want to work. Yes. There is always opportunity in, in all governorates of each. Yes, to whoever wants to work, which is the main um, pillar, one of the main yeah. pillars that you mentioned at the yeah. beginning of the episode, to be providing job opportunities according to the vision and the strategy of the political leadership. Yeah. And of course, this will be getting foreign direct investments at the same time. How would you assess the whole situation in terms of providing millions of job opportunities over the past decade and at the same time providing the foreign direct investment or getting more foreign direct investment from the outside world? We have uh, to mention that uh, we have been facing a problem with the foreign currency uh, in the last uh, seven, eight months, but thanks God is starting from 6th of February. Uh, the Central Bank of Egypt and His Excellency Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli, they have set together a program for trying to stop uh, the free market or the black market. And we say because everything was disturbed, really, the pricing was disturbed for commodities, even if it is local. And uh, the situation was not that good. But starting from that day, we see, we feel stability stability and the, even the relation between our partners in, in, the, in the whole world was uh, trying to strengthen more and more. And I can tell you that uh, I mentioned that last week I was in Italy, the situation have uh, changed completely because exporters there were facing a lot of delays for having their invoices values again, but now things are more and more flexible and this will lead to 
uh, investments because investors always have to look for specific uh, issues. Mm -hmm. They have to look for stability of the currency. They have to look for the legislations, which also I consider it a mega project. Yes. Improving the legislations in Egypt and try to attract uh, foreigners by facilitating the steps of uh, uh, having issuing a company in mm. Egypt or uh, um, that uh, we have seen in the parliament that they have allowed foreigners to own the land with a specific, uh, uh, um, if we can say, measures, but at the end it's much, much more easier than before. Mm -hmm. So at the end, legislation was one of the mega projects in Egypt. Things are more easy now. Uh, everything is crystal clear, as we say, that there is always auctions when they offer uh, industrial lands or uh, agri-lands. Uh, we have seen the mega projects in agriculture, which have more or less tried to decrease the devaluation of the prices of food, which you have faced on the last four or five months. But you, we remember we have been talking about prices of onion uh, for 40 pounds and 50 uh, pounds and yes. tomato at, and now <coughs> it's 7, 8 and things are going to stabilize more and more which will be we are back to the normal map of industry and investment of Egypt. Yes, uh, hopefully. Engineer Mustafa Nagari, the Deputy Head of the Exporters Association, thank you very much for being with us tonight on pleasure. the Daily Debate. Anytime. Thank you. And this uh, brings us to the end of uh, the Daily Debate for tonight. Thank you for watching and goodbye.